So RV life isn't always rainbows and unicorns. Absolutely not. Hey y'all, we're Jimmy and Lisa with Finest Camping. And to in today's video, it's just about that. It's n RV life is definitely not all the unicorn and rainbows that everybody thinks it is. We're out on the road all the time. We're in bad weather. We're in hurricane weather. We're in tornado warnings. We're in, like last night was heavy, 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 heavy rain and wind. Very windy, which I, I'll take the rain over the wind any day. <laughs> So where this where we're getting ready to get with this video is everybody thinks that the RV life you guys live the life you live the life and and Paul's because we do it doesn't need to be all dark and gloomy because it's not that we do love what we do we love being able to see all the places meet all the people and the upside far outweighs the downside but. When you have a couple of down days in a row, sometimes it gets a little tolling, just like if you're living in an RV. I mean, if you're uh -huh. living in a house. Um, you know, you have those weeks where the, the washer, washer goes, goes out, out, the dishwasher goes out, when you the buy, roof has a leak, you know, and it seems like, oh my God, everything's coming to When you buy a new head. house, you get all new appliances, and I think they're, they, they only work for well, like yeah, one year. Yeah, they all die at the so same time. Die. <laughs> so it's been this last week or so has kind of been one of those weeks, and... Although we do think we're living the life. The sad thing was this was a vacation week. It was. And and we just we just want to say that, you know, hey guys, it's not always it's not always great. There are weeks, there are days where you kind of scratch your head and think, "Oh my god, what are we doing?" And this week was one of those. So we always schedule around a week of Thanksgiving to try to go down to the Florida Keys through our Thousand Trails memberships and let us talk about Thousand Trails for a minute. There is a love-hate relationship with Thousand Trails. For sure. You love them today, you hate them tomorrow. Um, but I will still say at the end of the day, I do still hold my position that dollar for dollar benefits that you get at the end of the day, Thousand Trails is still the best deal out there. Especially for us full-timers. Right. Because we can bounce from park to park to park to park all year round and never have to pay, you know, we don't have to pay anything. Every once in a while, there's a Thousand Trails that you have to pay $5 for... Well, because they're Encore 50 Parks. Amps. No, for 50 amps. Oh, Or okay, if yeah. they're Encore Parks, sometimes you have to pay $20 a night, which at the Florida Keys is $20 a night, which... For twenty dollars a night in the Florida Keys, you can't beat that. Can't beat that. So, but what that also means is this time of year when everybody's coming from the south down to where it's warmer, all of especially the full timers that you have in the system are all coming to the same place. So maybe in the middle of the summer you could get into Florida, no problem. Like you could get straight in, you could stay two, three weeks, not a problem. This time of year is peak season for Florida, well, so also, you can only stay two weeks, and you figure you've got way more people trying to get in the same place. Well, park. we have a lot more people, especially this year, for a couple of reasons. For the first reason was our home park, Virginia, is closing for the winter. For the first time, we've been members for over 15 or 16 years at Thousand Trails. Now, Thousand Trails is deciding to shut our Virginia parks down from December all the way through March. Right. So some of the people that still love to go out for the weekend or whatever it is can't do it. Some of us that came through for Christmas that wanted to stay there for Christmas time can't do that anymore. So they're all, they're all pushing us to go farther it, and farther it south. Forces everybody down. And they're selling more and more memberships to get farther, you know, more and more memberships. So well, they that's even money worse. Too. And then the big thing was Hurricane Ian. Ian. So we were scheduled to go, we wanted to get into the Keys. Of course, we could not get in there. So we were scheduled to go to another campground and they got hit by. They the got hurricane. hit by Ian, but. I called shortly after, before, and they were one of the parks. There was a, a huge group. I mean, as would be, because they all got hit. There was a huge group down there that were closed indefinitely until they could make repairs and get their power back and, and fix all the things. And first and, of all, we're not insensitive about that. We no, know that no, hurricane no. was a disaster. And it did, I get it. It did do a lot of damage. It cost a lot of lives. And yes, we're still alive, and we can go camping somewhere else. So... The thing is, I, I did call um, only because I felt like there were so many people that were now 
everybody's coming south and now there's all these people really far south that are trying to come to northern Florida because all these parks are closed before I fought the battle of moving further up, I wanted to make sure that this wasn't a park that was gonna be open. So I did call a few weeks after the hurricane, <clears throat> and, I, and I did say, I, you know, I'm not insensitive. I, I get that you all have been through a lot. I just don't wanna move my reservation if you think you'll be back open by Thanksgiving. Um, you know, we've still got quite a bit of time before that happens, so where, where do you think you'll be? Do you have any idea? And I believe I spoke with the manager. I can't promise you that. But he said, no, he said, we actually got our water and power back this week. And I anticipate we will be open by the end of next week at the very latest, which was still in October. And I said, oh, okay, so we're coming Thanksgiving. Yeah, you should be fine. We will definitely open by, be open by then. Don't worry about moving your reservations. Now, so, the amenities may not be there. The pool right. may not be open. They may not have Wi-Fi. They may not have... But they did have amenities. water. They had their electric and they had a site. So I'm thinking we're good. So here we go. We're leaving. We're, where did we come from? We came from Orlando, which no, was only yes. a three-hour drive. And we got there, and we were greeted by the manager this time, who said, there we got was a lot three of... of us. Well, there was three of us in our group, so let's start with that. And he said, we do have the sites for you guys, um, but our sites are kind of soft right now. I said, okay. We, we, we've heard that before. That, and that, that, that's, that's fine. Um, it would have been nice, maybe a phone call that morning to say, hey, I know you're due to check in today and our sites are really soft <laughs> because that's what he meant to say. It's not quite what he said. Um, and I said, well, what does that mean exactly? And he said, well, you know, we'll let you go take a look at them and see what you think. But these are only sites that we have left. Yeah, I so said, is there, you know, are there any other sites? Like, you're, we're in a pull through. Is there maybe a back end available that's drier? Nope. These are the only sites we have. So the guys that were in our group, we all, all hop on the back of the back of the, the golf, golf cart, cart and go we go for a tour, and we hit my site, our site, and, which was soft. And, and we we our walked heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. And I walk it, and I go, mm, yeah, I, I should be able to get that. This. It's squishy. We should better make it. And then we go to the next site where our friends are in, and we walk it, and theirs seemed even harder. Theirs seemed like it was better. Um, so Meanwhile, I'm up front, patiently waiting and looking for other parks, thinking if he comes back and says we can't do this, now what? Like, it's the week of Thanksgiving. Are we going to be able to get in somewhere else? Are we going to spend it in a Walmart so to, parking lot? So to have a funny, we're in the back of this golf cart, and we're rolling around the back side of it. And the activity director, which was driving us around, she says, oh, no, uh-oh. <laughs> and we all look at each other and go, what? She says, I'm almost out of battery on my golf cart. I said, out of battery in your golf cart? She said, can you guys get off and push? <laughs> yeah, I would love to get off and push. So we help push, and she gets going with us larger guys she off the cart. She got the big cart. guys off. It worked just fine. She was able to get up there. So we get up there, and we talk to him, and he says, what do you think? And they said... We can probably get in there. And then he tells Lisa that... It, it depends on how good of a driver you are, he says. What's the matter with I said, oh, how's that? And he said, well, if you can... They're pull-through sites. So if you're a good enough driver to just pull in on the first try and not have to back and pull and back and pull, you should be good. The people that tend to be getting stuck are people that have to pull in and back up and pull in and back up. And I said, well... Okay, I'll, I'll give you, maybe you have to be a decent driver to do that. However, another factor that plays into that is how tight are your streets and how tight are your sights? To which he says, they're very tight. Well, it, the streets are so tight as I was trying to make my right hand turn, I had to get far enough left, but I had to worry about my tail swing on the left hand side. And as I made the turn, we were, we we were, were about to run into the camper that was on our row on the back side of it. And, and we then we had a palm tree, side. had a palm tree there or, or, or a tree there that I was almost hitting there. I would say we were within six inches of our awning with that palm tree. So they're tight. And of course, they're one way roads they're not even two ways, which we love two ways. That gives you more room to get yeah, wider. They're, they're one way do, because so. they're only wide enough for one vehicle. So I swing it on in and I, I said, you know, let me put this thing in four wheel drive just to make 100% sure. And as I swing that thing in and I have to go over the concrete slab. Because the tight, the site is that tight. It had to go over top of that and straighten up. And when I did, it just like got super soft. Can we just back up and talk about that concrete pad for a minute? 
I, I do appreciate the concrete pad where your picnic table and, you know, if your grill, your chairs, whatever it would be, because that's nice, especially when you're coming in the steps. It helps keep dirt from coming inside. What I don't understand is a lot, and these are a lot of older Encore parks is where I see this a lot. Um, the lot where you park, let me back up, where you park is grass and your patio is concrete. And that's great. That, that, that has all kinds of benefits. Except when the concrete pad is literally five to six inches higher than when you're parking or where you're parking. And then when it's muddy and you sink down even further, fortunately for us, we have two doors because if not, our solid steps would run into a problem. They wouldn't have enough room to open and be able to shut the door. So we pulled in our front door would have hit the concrete and there's no way it would have been able to open because the pad was so high but our back door was still off the concrete pad so we were set we were very crooked but we didn't want to pull very them back crooked. pull them back we just pulled in and as it turned out we sunk. would have well we, we did sunk. sink but we had had to back out anyway because the way the pull through site was they had a light pole and the person Too across the street had all kinds of cars and stuff parked out there so we were going to have to back out uh, so there was really not a whole lot of need to like straighten and, and try to get now, stuck. Let's, in let's get one other thing straight too. We know that we bought a 45 foot rig. Oh and yeah, yeah, Most yeah. of these campgrounds are not suited for 45 foot. Well, a lot of the older ones older because ones. they didn't make this when that campground. Was and built. we understand that. We I get know it. we know there's going to be times that it's going to be tough for us to get in. So don't. Don't comment below and go, you guys bought that 45-foot camper, so that you should realize that. Okay. and We I, do understand. Well, but wait a minute. So let me back up, though. When I make my reservation, I have to tell them how long my rig is. Oh. It, it asks, RV length, and do slide. you have slide outs? So if your streets are too narrow or if the sites are too small to accommodate a 45-foot or 44-foot 11-inch RV with three slides then when i enter that information you should simply say we don't have a site that you will fit in well, but the they don't well the first thing that we, some annuals came over there and said i just don't understand why they let you big guys come in here because this park is not designed for big people so and they weren't being ugly to no, us no, they, they actually they, they actually were just were, watching the struggle there, there's more talking about them in, in a few <laughs> minutes but um if they understand it then the management should understand that. If the park should understand that. And when we sign up, they should say, if you're 42, 41 foot, we can't accommodate you. And we will go somewhere and else. And I don't like that. Like, don't get me wrong. I hate when the park doesn't have sites big enough for me. However, I would rather you tell me that than let me get there and not be able to get parked or not be able to have to ask somebody to move their car because the streets are so narrow so back to but getting back to getting in. We got in. We were we were pretty much we got level. We no, we were pretty much at an angle, but we were going to make it work because it's our vacation. We're going to make this work. We just so have to park here. That's one all. of the maintenance guys runs over and he says, "Do you guys have wood?" No, I don't usually carry wood because we have other things that we use to. We're not used to being in the mud. So <laughs> he brought over some wood, and we put the wood down, and we used our Anderson levelers to try to level because, of course, one side one was side sinking was down in the low. mud. And when I pulled up on top of that, that thing just sunk farther down in the mud. The Anderson levelers, which are what, six maybe six inches. inches on the thickest end, they were completely under the mud. Like, you couldn't even see them. That's how muddy it was. And then the tire still wasn't quite at ground level, but it was pretty close. So, but we got level. But we we got the wood. We put the wood underneath the six, the six point all level. We hit it. It went up. We're level. We're not happy. We're gonna bring mud in every time we walk in and out of the camper. And then they turned around and said, "Oh, don't forget, it's gonna rain tomorrow and the next day. Heavy rain. So it's even gonna be even more mud here." But so we made it. We we're done. We got in. We're happy. But wait a minute. <laughs> I will give kudos to the maintenance guy because he was covered in mud. So I'm sure this had been his entire day so far. <laughs> And what the manager told me was it was so soft because they'd gotten five inches of rain the day before. And that's fine. We but get what it. multiple people in the park said was, we've been here X number of years and it's always like this. What the manager led me to believe was this is typically their dry season, but because they'd gotten all the rain, it was muddy. 
multiple folks said, um, yeah, I don't know why you were told that because I've been here however many years and it's always this way. It's always muddy. So here comes the fun part. We bring our friends in. Their sight seemed drier. Things aren't always what they seem, guys. He comes in, comes in the same kind of way we do. He pulls on through. He gets straight. He looks like he needs to go where he needs to go. We pull the steps down, and his steps hit that concrete that we were talking about. Won't work. He only has one door. Can't, so he, get, him, can't get anything to get, get it down. We even pull the legs out of the bottom of it to see if we can get it just straight. It's not going to happen. So... We need to do the what the we managers. We either need to pull further forward so that his steps are off the pad, or he needs to do the back, the back forward, forward, which back the manager forward says you're not a good away from the. You're pad. not a good driver if you have to do this. So I don't believe in that. I've been pulling campers and trailers all my life, and sometimes you got to get straight, back up, and get straight, and move over. So long story short. We pack, we shut his door, get him all in, and we start pulling up, and we start pulling up. The truck just sunk. It was not good. Sunk. To the point where he was not going anywhere. In four-wheel drive. In four-wheel drive, whatever you want to call it, six wheels spinning. All six wheels are just spinning and spinning and spinning. So, of course, everybody gets frustrated, and we go find some more blocks. We find some more um, wood. Find everything the annuals we can. That, the annuals that are there are trying to help us. They're doing anything they can. So... Make a long story short, he's in, he's done, he can't level, he can't do anything. We At least we weren't straight. We were level and we could live the way we were, but they couldn't even get in their rig. They, they could not stay that way. So we unhooked his truck and hoping it would dry up a little bit. Maybe we can put some more wood down in the areas and pile it in and stack it in. <laughs> Maybe they can go get us some rock and put it in here and we can back up the, tra the truck back up to the trailer again and pull out. Not happening. So they go up front and they talk to the manager and the manager says, I can see if I can find another place for you guys to go. In the meantime, let me see if I can get a tow truck here to get you out because we're not getting it out. So they go up front and the manager does a great job. He calls another park. And he got us in. That park was not even open yet. Because of storm damage, they and were still cleaning was, up. That was it's either Riverview or Riverside. He'll have to fix that on the edit because I can always say it backwards. But it's another encore. But it was in Arcadia, Florida. Yeah, it's another encore park there that was not open because it got hit by the by the hurricane and they had damage, a lot of damage. They did. But they they said you can drive down here, see if the site because our sites are wet. You can drive down here and see if the sites are okay for you guys. Well, she said they don't sound as soupy as what you've got going on there, but they are a little soft. So, so in the meantime, they're trying to figure out how they can get their tow truck in there and get the tow truck out. So we hook back up to our camper, and we back out, which wasn't easy. We got out, we got, got our out. stuff out, and we drive down the road, 30 minutes down the road. And the third person that was with us that hadn't even tried to park, yeah, he went with us, too. He said, we, forget that. It was like 20 minutes, um, and when we got to that park, and then the manager did tell us before we got there, our sites might be a little soft. Um, we do not have Wi-Fi or cable, but we do have water and electric. You know, we're still in cleanup mode, and, you know, at this point, it's like, I we just need a place to park. If you will let us come stay, we are, you know, more than gracious for that, thankful, and we appreciate you letting us come. So we drive down there and Lisa gets us all checked in and we drive around and see all these campers on their side. Trailers beat all up. Fronts of them down on their noses. We're it was like, wow. really sad and really hard to see. And you know they've been cleaning up ever since the storm. Which so was a month, month and a half ago. What's left is just a fraction of the devastation that they saw in that park. So... That makes you appreciate them letting us come in even more because they had a lot going on. And they did have some people staying there. I'm sure they're annuals that were there and everybody was helping clean up and, and get... But they like they had their pool back open. Um, oh, so, so, we, so we back into working. our site and the site is actually very hard. We don't have any issues. The sites issues. are huge. Yeah, the site was not muddy at all, not soft at all. Uh -uh. We backed in. <clears throat> we get it unhooked. We get all leveled. We get the other guy that's with us. 
on her, or he's, he's got a class, he's got a class a. a. So he backs in, he gets all leveled. Everything is beautiful here now. Nice park. It kind of looks like, you know, when a storm is coming through and you're all in the dark and you're all in the rain and then the, then it's over and the light comes through and the sun's out it and the rainbows the rainbow are out. At the end of the so storm. there's your rainbow. There, that's not it the was. unicorn, but it's the rainbow. So now it's like, okay, now we can start our vacation. Now we can have fun, but... We still got somebody stuck in we, the mud. They're still stuck in the tow truck to this to this minute. It's still time. not there yet. Which was funny because before we left that part, somebody <laughs> said, "Oh, the tow truck's here." And then somebody else said, "Oh no, it's almost here." Well, it turns out it was two hours out. So, so we he he we called him and make sure the tow truck wasn't there yet, and he got pulled out. And he said, "No, but if you guys can come back, we would love for you guys to come back at least help because." His jacks were going to be real close to the concrete as they were pulling. They said the tow truck was going to have to pull them out. He just needed extra he need, eyes. He needed to set some more eyes. So we all drive back over there and we check it all out. The tow truck gets there probably 45 minutes later after we arrived for the second time. And he hooks up to him. And big tow truck. Like big. the big heavy duty ones. <laughs> so he, he hooks hooked up, a strap to it. He, he hooked, hooked like a strap a up, up to it and hooked it up. And without any problem, he, he winched him right on out of there. So... He's out of there now, and we With get a very muddy truck in our nasty RV, but, muddy truck. but at the end of the day, he got out. So he shows up right about dark, and we back him in, and we get him straight, and all is good now. So we're all happy. We're enjoying our vacation. We wasted a day of our vacation, but I think we learned a lesson. Um... May, I don't know. I don't the, the know. One le, the one Do lesson, you maybe call a, well, well, before the, you head over that day? Because that was the hardest part for us to swallow. Okay. The one you, lesson we wanted to happen was, and we hope they see this video, at least the manager could have called. Exactly. We drove three and a half hours over there. We know Which there was a hur, We know there was a hurricane, but Orlando had a hurricane too. They all got the wind and the rain. But at least, at least, he could have said, hey guys, we know you guys are coming in today. Check in is at 12. I just want to let you know that the sites are super muddy. If you're 45 foot long and you're heavy, you may get stuck. Because he knew. He knew it was you, soft. You can look at that and tell he it, it might have been soft. He knew it was soft. And here's my thing. He didn't know whether we were driving. I mean, I guess he could have looked at my reservations. He didn't know necessarily that we were driving two hours or eight hours that I've day. I've been upset about that. And so eight hours. my thought is. What if we'd have gotten there late in the day and After started five this process? After five when they're closed. Or even even before five. Like, we got there right around probably one o'clock, I guess. And it was almost dark when we finally got parked at the other park. So what if we had started that process later in the day? What a disaster that could have been. It was bad enough already, but it could have been so much worse. And I know we weren't the only people there. However, there was I think more checking in behind us. Too. There, yeah, there was a couple more coming in behind us, but I'm gonna break it back to this. Orlando Thousand Trails is a huge, huge park, and they call you the day before and the day of your reservation to let you know their check-in policy because they have a very strict policy on when you can and can't get there, and confirm your reservation. Now, there's no way that this park we were at had anywhere near that many reservations coming in that day because the park's just not that big. They were pretty full. So I feel like somebody there Dropped a could ball. have spent 10 minutes maybe calling people that were checking in that day when they knew they had a problem to say, hey, I know you're supposed to be here and while the park is fixed back and everything's up and running, we got a lot of rain yesterday and some of our sites are really wet and one of the ones that's really wet or three of the ones that are, <laughs> are really all wet our sites. are yours and unfortunately it's all we have. So you're welcome to come and try it out if you want to. I just need you to know that there is a chance that you may not be able to use the site. And then before we spent three hours on the road driving there, we could have tried to make other arrangements. At the end of the day, it all worked out. Um, you know, he, he did step up finally. And help us get into another park. And thank you, thank you, thank you to the park that let us come in. Um, they didn't have to. They weren't open to the public. They weren't opening, I think, till December 1st or 2nd because they were still actively cleaning up. So they absolutely did not have to let us come in, and we appreciate it. So that. if you guys are a park owner, a park manager, or something like that, just think a little bit ahead. Well, and I think That's most always. parks do. Yeah. Um, our experience overall 
has been that people would call and say, hey, you know, we've got this issue or, hey, we might not have a site big enough for you. But this time that was not the case. So that being said, moral of the story is <laughs> all days are not perfect. You don't always just pull in and set up and everything works well. No, there, there's travel days. you got to get from point A to point B. Travel days aren't always great. Weather is not always your friend. But at the end of the day, we push through. And it worked out. We had a we great, had a great vacation. vacation. Our daughter um, came down and spent a week with us. And we all got a great, we had a great Thanksgiving. And we got a lot of relaxation in and some sightseeing in. And the warm weather. And it was it was actually on the verge of being hot. It, it was hot. It was what? almost on the verge of being too hot. Which, if you know me and you know I hate the cold, I know that's hard it to It wasn't swallow. that it was hot. It was 87, 88 degrees, but there was no breeze blowing. Right. So and, usually the way, and where we were parked, even with our awning out, we couldn't get a ton of shade. So if you were outside, you were literally just baking. Usually inside. we're down in the Keys this time of the year. And that time of the year, it's 87 degrees, but the breeze, but the breeze. is blowing. So but somebody okay. didn't get to get, get the Keys. It wasn't year. snowing. It did rain a couple times, but it wasn't a miserable rainy it was week. A Florida rain. We had a great time. We had a good vacation. We just wasted a day of it playing in the mud. So um, let us so. let us know. Have you guys had any of these non rainbow and unicorn days? Has it been to the point where you're going, I'm done with this? Or Or do you call ahead? I do have a friend that has a really large rig and she always calls ahead about a week ahead to make sure that they have a site. It's going to be big enough. That well, if we'd have called thing. out a week ahead, it wouldn't have done any good because the rain came in the night right. before. Right, so. and they did have a site. I guess technically that was big enough. We got in and, and we were straight. But tell us what your so worst adventure. So is that our adventure... lesson? Should we should we be calling parks the day before? Let us know what your checking? worst adventure is on the road. I mean, let me know, let us yeah, know. What experiences have you had? Good, bad. Well, give me your bad ones. Well, maybe you've Everybody... never had a bad one. Then you haven't been traveling long enough. Well, maybe, maybe you're just a weekend warrior and you haven't really had a bad one. Although we met some people last night and they were telling us some bad ones that they'd had. So I think we all have those stories, so please share them because at the time you're going through them, they're not fun. We but could, after the fact, you can we kind sit, of sit back, back and, and laugh. laugh. We laugh about it and joke about it and go, take this one off the list or we need to do this a little bit different. We have been RVing for over 16 years. We've been full-time for two and we're still learning every single day. So now we're starting to think. Do we call ahead, the day ahead? Just to, And sometimes it's hard to get in touch with them. So it is. That is that is fair, too. And here's the other thing. We video all these things, for one, to share with you for your entertainment purposes. What's or for you to go, how stupid are they? Um, for two, so we can look back and go, oh, my God, do you remember that time? Do you remember that time when the site was like eight inches of mud and we wasted a whole day of our vacation? And it's still a little tender now, but we can't at least laugh about it. But it was a mess. But later on, it'll be way funnier, and we will talk about it and laugh and go, "Oh my God, can you believe we did that?" But um, so I'm sure you have those stories too, where at the time it was like, "Just get us out of here," but now you look back and laugh about it and go, "Remember that time when?" So that's what I'm interested in hearing. The remember that time when. <laughs> so comment below. Let us know. Share this with all of your friends. So if they ever need. If they're thinking about going down a road, they're thinking about the RV life, and everybody says the RV life is the best thing in the world, I would still do this over again tomorrow. This is this is the life that we've chosen, we love, we like. There's downs and there's ups, ups and downs and sideways, whatever it is. But the ups far outweigh the downs. I'll still stick with that. So that's it, guys. To the next time you find us deeply stuck in, in the, the mud. mud. Safe travels, y'all.